Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Japan House London event, Hashirama Sochi, Richness of Space in Japanese Architecture, a talk by Nakatani Norihito. My name is Simon Wright. I'm the Director of Programming at Japan House London. And as a part of Japan House London's current exhibition, Windowology, New Architectural Views from Japan, we invite architectural historian Nakatani Norihito to explore the world of intercolumnar elements, which are a key feature in Japanese architecture. Before we start, I would just like to run through a few notes about how today's uh, session will be conducted. Um, if you're joining on, on Zoom, please note that your microphone and webcam will be disabled for the entire duration of this event. Um, please use the question and answer feature to type your questions, however, for the presenters at any time throughout the session. Uh, if you do not want your name to be attached, you can send your question anonymously. Questions will be collated by Japan House moderators and a selection will be answered live at the event, at the end of the event. Uh, but please do note that we may not be able to answer all the questions during the session. The contents of this event will be streamed live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and LinkedIn and a recording will be archived later. So today's event is broadcast live from Japan and from the UK, from two locations, uh, Japan House London, uh, in London in the UK, and Takahama in Ibaraki Prefecture in Japan. So in Japan's wood-based architecture, the window-like components that occupy the gaps between columns are known as hashirama sochi, literally devices between columns. They take the form of walls or fixtures such as shoji, which are sliding translucent screens and, and fusuma, sliding partitions. The diversity and dynamis dynamism of these elements are a key source of the spatial richness of Japanese architecture. So in this talk, uh, architectural historian Nakatani Norihito draws upon examples from Japan's rich architectural history to illuminate the origins and development of these intercolumnar devices and the key role they have played in shaping Japanese buildings throughout the ages. And following his presentation, there'll be an opportunity for our registered guests to ask questions to our speaker. So please do send your questions through at any time. I would now like to take this opportunity to introduce our presenter, Nakatani Norihito Sensei, please. Welcome, Nakatani Sensei. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a great Hello, pleasure to have you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for I will just maybe tell our guests a little bit about you, and then I will hand over to you for the first part of the session, which will be the presentation. So, a professor in the Department of Architecture at Waseda University. Nakata, Nakatani Norihito is an architectural historian noted for a variety of activities. These include the study of the writings of early modern era carpentry and the continuity of land characteristics and their influence on the present day. He oversees the project to revisit the houses that the Japanese anthropologist Kon Wajiro visited in the early 20th century and documented their change. And more recently, He's traveling along the edges of the Eurasian plate, researching villages that have existed for a thousand years. His publications include Future Commune, Moving Earth and Shape of Living, Traveling Along the Edge of the Eurasia Plate, Revisiting Kon Wajiro's Japanese Houses, Severalness Plus, The Cycle of Things and Human Beings, and The Study of Classical Literature, The Meiji Period, and architects. Nakatani Sensei received the Kong Wajiro Award from the Japan Society of Lifeology in 2013 and the Writers Award from the Architectural Institute of Japan in 2013, 2018 and 2020. Thank you very much. We are greatly privileged to have you with us today. So thank you so much. 
I will also mention that Bethan Jones uh, will be our interpreter for today's event and will be participating off camera. But let me hand over to you, Nakadani Sensei. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so, え、こんにちは。初めまして。え、えっと、中谷のりさと申します。今日はあの、え、日本語で話させていただくようにします。よろしくお願いします。ベサンさん、よろしくお願いします。Hello everyone, my name is Nakatani Norihito and today I'm going to be speaking Japanese. Thank you all for joining us. そうしましたらこれからあのスライドを見せえっとやるやりますね。えっと見え見えてますでしょうか。yeah, I hope everyone can see my slides. えっと、そうしましたらこれからえっと、30分ほど通訳のも含めてあのお話をさせていただきます。my presentation is about 30 minutes long with interpretation. 今日のだえ土台名は柱間装置と日本のモデュールということで日本建築の質をですね支えさされている日本建築の特質についてお話をしたいと思います。as you can see, my title today is Hashirama Sochi and Modular Architecture, the background supporting the quality of Japanese architecture. えっと、今はなかなか日本にコロナで来れませんが、え、外国の方も京都に来られるとですね、こういうあの縁側というところがあるんですが、ここで、え、内外の教会でみんな佇んで、え、風景を見ています。it's quite difficult at the moment to come to Japan because of uh, coronavirus. But if you do come to Kyoto, you might find yourself in a place like this, an engawa or veranda, uh, the boundary between inside and outside, uh, enjoying the scenery. えっと、日本建築はあのアジアの木造建築の一つですけれども、確かに考えてみると、この内外のですね、え、境界部分の作り込みが大変え、豊かであるということに気づきます。architecture is largely wooden as it is across a lot of Asia. But when we look at it closely, we'll see that this space between the inside and the outside is a very rich one. で、その理由をま考えた場合にですね、その今日我々が考えようとしているま柱間装置、ま代表的なものはその窓とかスライディングドアなんですけれども、そういったものの持ってる多様性、そういったものが非常に重要なんじゃないかなというふうに思います。when we think about the reason for that richness, uh, we realize perhaps that hashirama sochi that we're going to be talking about today, be they windows or sliding doors, the sheer variety uh, available really contributes to this richness. えっと、この建物は西本願寺にある非運閣という建物なんですが、外側から見てもいろんな建具があることに気づくと思います。this building is Hyunkaku in Nishihonganji Temple. And just looking at it, you can see a variety of Hasirama Sochi fittings. And a variety of windows when you look from the inside. This variety of windows that form the border between inside and outside is visible not just in the homes and the buildings of the upper classes, but also in townhouses, which is one unique element of Japanese architecture. えっと、日本の場合、その柱と柱の間っていうのは非常に重要な意味を持っていて、あの宗教的な意味では鳥居というのがあるんですけれども、例えばこの、え、今回映画で紹介をしている日吉大社の中では、え、神にの、え、神が
has an important meaning in Japan. In, uh, in a religious context, you have the tori or shrine gate. Uh, and in the film uh, that forms part of the exhibition, uh, we see this scene from Hiyoshi Taisha Shrine, where these portable shrines um, are stored between the pillars. この撮影した時は3年前のものですからこれは現在にも生きている伝統です。This was filmed three years ago, but the tradition continues today. それからこれはちょっとあの新しいものですが、これは僕の好きな小山接待という画家のですね、えー、青柳という絵,絵,絵です。Uh, this is a picture called Aoyagi by an artist,、uh, Komura Settai, of whom I'm fond. で、ここでは日本建築の、要は、えー、障子が外されて、要は柱間装置が外されて、中の、えー、三味線が露出しているという、そういう絵ですけれども、非常に独特の風情があります。It's a unique scene and shows in Japanese architecture that the Hasirama Sochi have been removed and you can see the shamisen revealed inside. で今日はまあこういう日本建築を彩っているような柱間装置の豊かさがどこから来たのかについて、まあ、3つの主なトピックでお話をして最後結論にしたいと思います。Today, I'm going to be talking about where the richness of Hashirama Sochi, this、um, element of Japanese architecture, comes from,、um, from three perspectives before drawing my conclusion. Let's start with the first topic. Which is what are Hashirama Sochi? えっと柱間装置というのは日本建築の場合、まあえー、木の柱で、えー、建てられていますがその間にあるものすべてをですね、えー、移動可能な装置として見なすというそういう考えであります。Japanese architecture consists of wooden pillars and everything between those pillars are thought of as movable devices. であのこれはあのこの考え方はあの最近の、まあ、考え方でもあるんですけれどもこれは日本建築の特質をよく、えー、ついたあの言葉だなと思って僕はこ、えーえー、好んで使っています、えー、インターコラムナデバイセスというそういう考え方ですね。It's something that we're familiar with nowadays, but it also go, goes back through the history of Japanese architecture, this concept of intercolumnar devices. So, the first point is. So that's the definition of Hashirama Sochi. Now I'd like to take a quick look at, Japanese, at the history of Japanese architecture, architecture in four points. まず日本建築は、えー、中国からその作り方を学びでそれが、えー、日本という地方で独特に発展したものであります。Firstly, Japanese architecture was learnt from China and then developed locally in Japan. ですので、まず、えー、木造の軸組みを使うという、そういうところは、中国建築から、えー、影響を、えー、受けました。So the idea of using wooden frameworks came from China. えー、その後しかしながらはですね、日本人はなぜか、えー、土足が嫌いで、まあ、嫌いだったかどうかわからないけども、床を張るんですね。それは東南アジアからの影響だったかもしれません。However,、uh, in Japan, people went on to add raised flooring.、Uh, this may have come from Southeast Asia, and it may be because the Japanese people didn't like sitting directly on the earth floor, but they added floors to their buildings. でその次にあの面白いのは、えー、日本建築からですね、あの固定された壁がなくなっていきます、急速に。それも平安時代ですから、非常に古い時期からそういったことが起こります
The next interesting thing that happens, and this is a long time ago in the Heian period, is that the walls disappear, fixed walls disappear from Japanese architecture. つまり固定した壁というものがなくなるというのが中国建築との非常に大きな違いでこれは日本建築のまあ独自性であるというふうに考えていいかなというふうに僕は思っています。And this lack of fixed walls is one of the big differences between Japanese and Chinese architecture, one of the unique elements of Japanese architecture. そのように平面が自由になった後で次はですねえー、屋根構造の改善があって、えー、さらに平面計画が自由になっていきます。でその結果、軒下の空間が豊かになっていくという、そういう特徴があります。Once the,、uh, the space within a building had been freed up in this way, the roofs were further developed to free up space even further, and this created the rich space that we find under the eaves of the building. その結果柱間装置が増え、えー、軒下の空間が豊かになることによって特にこの部分が日本建築の特質を表している部分だなというふうに思っています。The development and the variety of 柱間装置 that developed and this rich space under the eaves lead to one of the unique features of Japanese architecture. では、えっと、言葉だけだとよくわからないと思うので、柱間装置というのはどこかというのをお見せしたいと思います。えっと、これはあの鎌倉時代と、それから江戸、えー、室町時代の、まあえー、日本の木造軸組みの建物なんですけれども、ここの中で柱間装置とは、このオレンジ色の部分ですね。It can be quite hard to picture what Hashirama Sochi are just listening to the word. So I've taken two buildings here from the Kamakura and the Muramachi period wooden buildings consisting of、um, pillars and, and beams.、Uh, and the orange parts show where the Hashirama Sochi are. この柱間装置の部分に例えば、えー、壁が、えー、あるとしてもそれは完全に固定されて、えーえー、完全に固定されてい、えー、完全に固定されているものではなくて、あくまでもテンポラリーなものだということであります。And even if there is a wall、uh, as one of these hashirama sochi between the pillars,、uh, that wall is not fixed. It's, it's a temporary、uh, partition. で、それがですね、あのもう平安時代に。花開くわけですでこれはあの、まあ、江戸時代の、えー、江戸時代に平安時代のことを復元した本に書かれていた、えー、平安時代の貴族の、えー、家の風景です。This goes back to the Heian period.、Uh, this is a, a restored illustration、um, of the house of a noble family. でこれを見ると分かるように、まず固定壁が全くありません。But as you see, there are no fixed walls. 柱と柱の間に、えー、すだれ、なんていうんだろう、えーえー、すだれとかですね、パーティション、それから畳、す、え、べ、ー、て動くもので、えー、部屋が仕切られて、その時その時の目的に従って部屋が作られています。Everything between the pillars, the 柱間装置 Can move. The curtains, the partitions, the tatami, everything can be moved to fit the, the particular、uh, ceremony. えっと左下に写真がありますけれども、これはまあえっと、えー、後から復元して建てられたものなんですけれども、平安時代の自然、えー、平安時代のこういう建物というのはこういう柱だけが立っていて、そこに家具が、えー、置かれるというそういう空間だったわけです。If you look at the photograph bottom left, this is a restored Heian era building. But as you see, it consists purely of pillars and furniture. このようにしてもう平安時代の早い時期にですね日本建築独特の性格が生まれてきました。So this unique personality of Japanese architecture was, had arrived as early as the Heian period. えっとこれまでの話を中国建築との歴史、中国建築との違いからまとめてみます。まず一番左側が、これは中国で今、現存最古に残っている南朝テンプルです
Let's take another look at the differences, differences between Chinese and Japanese architecture. The building on the left here, Nanshan Temple, the oldest existing uh, temple uh, in China. えっと、この中国の建物では、え、木の柱を使いながらもう壁はしっかりとレンガで構成されています。It is built from wooden pillars, but the wooden pillars are enclosed in brick walls. え、しかし、それがま、日本に入ってくるとですね、そのブリックウォールがなくなっていきます。But when that comes to Japan, the brick walls disappear. え、真ん中は法隆寺伝法堂というもので、これは7世紀の建物で今でも残っています。The building in the middle is Horyuji, the Denpo Do Hall from the 17th century, which still stands today. で、ここにはもうレンガの壁はなく、え、そして、え、面白いことに床が張られてるんですね。中国建築では床が張られていません。つまり日本はえっと靴を脱いで上に上がるという風習があったというわけです。The brick walls are gone, uh, and interestingly, it has a raised floor. Uh, and the Jap Japanese have a custom of removing their shoes on entering a building. え、さらに、え、100年、え、1世紀ぐらい過ぎると、え、室町金堂というのができるんですけども、a century later, in the 8th century, uh, we have the Muroji Temple on the right. And we see some of the distinct, distinguishing features here of Hashirama Sochi. まず、えっと、屋根の構造と柱の構造が、野屋根という構造の、え、技法によって分断されます。the pillars and the roof are use the noyane hidden roof and or double roof construction. それによって、ま、え、の、え、えっと、屋根とですね、平面計画は全く別の、ま、え、発展を遂げることが可能になりました。And this allows for the roof and the combination of the roof and the spatial planning to take the architecture in different directions. で、その結果、日本建築ではここに縁側というような、え、ベランダのようなものが付き始めます。It also leads to the uh, appearance of the engawa or veranda in Japanese architecture. え、ま、え、え、ま、結論を言うと、中国建築が非常に原理的なのに対して、日本の場合はそれを、え、生活をする人、それを使う人の from this we can see that whilst Chinese architecture was theory based in Japan it was developed um, to suit the, the needs of those using the buildings え、これであの、日本建築のたった so that's uh, taken us through the the some of the unique points of Japanese architecture architecture looking at just four uh, points of, of of architectural history. はい。え、それでは、え、次のトピックに移ります。And we'll move on to the next topic. えっと、そのように、ま、非常にその自由で柔軟なあの計画が日本建築でなぜできたか。というとその背後にはですね、え、かなりきっちりとした、え、寸法計画があったといったことを言っておきたいと思います。The next uh, topic is what allows what was in the background of this free and flexible use of space in Japanese architecture. And the fact is that there were some very um standardized uh, sets of dimensions. え、ここで皆さんにあの、え、て、え、と知識として提供したいのは2つのモジュールシステムです。え、1つが木割りというもの、もう1つが畳割りというものです。There are two modular systems that I want you to know about today, which are kiwari and tatami wari. え、木割りはこれはあの木造の軸、え、軸組みの比例関係をえ、どのようにするかといった、え、建築全体のプロポーションに関わる美学的なものです。木割りは、あの、エステティック 
concept uh, that determines the proportion between uh, columns and beams. Tatami Ari to you know, and so to a matter of this knee, Tatami to you, and ma, a Nihon Niva, a Varades, a Tsukuta Matto Garden, the Skeda Mo, so no a simple base niste, hey men or Kangai take, a hey men cake or scoot take to you, so you can like a ga, so no atony dekimas. The Sorinio te, eh, ah, hi, do, eh, do, eh, do, eh, do, eh, do. Tatami Wari comes later. Uh, and is a way of planning space based on the dimension of tatami or straw mats. Eto tatami というのは一つの建築の商品です。え建築の中に入っている商品なんですけれども、それが先行して計画されるということは何かというと、建築のパーツがですね、先に作られるというそういう商品経済が発展するといったことにもつながります。The fact that the the dimensions are based Although the proportions are based on the dimensions of a tatami mat, means that building materials and components can be pre-made. So, let's start with the drawing. The drawing is based on the drawing of the drawing. The drawing is based on the drawing of the drawing. The drawing is based on the drawing of the drawing. The drawing is based on the drawing of the drawing. Let's look at Kiwari first, though. Uh, this uh, writing is a carpenter passing on his secrets to his family. A text of the proportion について述べているんですけれども、それを私の方で演じしてみたものが例えばこういうところです。And I've tried to uh, recreate in a diagram the proportions that this carpenter describes in his text. そうすると、あの西洋建築のウィ,、まあ、ウィトルウィーストはまた違いますけれども、非常にきれいな、えー、寸法体系をして、えー、軒下の関係をいろいろ決めているということが分かるかと思います。And you can see here that everything under the eaves is set out in a very neat、um, proportional relation. えー、このように、まあ、木割りは美学的なものでもありました。So, Kiwari was also an aesthetic concept. If we look now at Tatami Wari, but first, let's look at Tatami themselves. This is a scroll from the 13th century, and you have people here sleeping on Tatami. つまり当時畳はですね、あの建物全体に、えー、え敷き詰めるものではなくてベッドでした。ベ,、えー、ベッドの、えー、マットです。At the time, tatami weren't something that covered the entire floor of a building. They were used as a bed or a mattress. それがだんだんだんだんですね、えー、っと時と、えー時と場所と融通に合わせてですね、畳をいろいろ並べ替えて、えー、行事をするというようなことが起こってきます。Then gradually over time, tatami come to be used and laid out in different patterns to suit the time, the, the, the place and the occasion. そうすると、畳の寸法とこの建築の柱玉の寸法がきれいに合ってないとなかなか良くないということに皆さんお気づきだと思います。And I think it would be here that people started to realize that the, the dimensions of the tatami really needed to match the dimensions of the space between、uh, the columns. このようにして畳がですね、平面計画の基準になるという、それが畳割りであります。And so tatami came come to be、uh, the unit on which spaces,、uh, spatial planning is based, giving rise to tatami wari. これはカトラリキューという建物の小意見の中の畳割りですが、えー、畳と障子が非常にきれいにあの合っているということがよくわかるかと思います。This is an example of tatami wari at the shoiken at the Katsura Villa. And as you can see, the tatami and the shoji paper sliding screens line up perfectly. この、えっと
まあ、柱間装置と、それから、えー、畳割りがですね、まあ、くっつくということによって、非常に、えー、室町時代以降、まあ、だ17世紀以降、まあ、16世紀か、えー、16世紀以降の日本建築というのは、非常に精密な寸法計画を、えー、で作るようになってきます。As 柱間装置 And tatami wari come together、uh, from the 16th century onwards. We have a very precise set of dimensions for Japanese architecture. Well, there are three or four of the features that we have to talk about in the first place. First, I'll introduce three elements of that, and then I'll show you some pictures. First, the first one is the Amado, which is the Hashirama Soji of Hatsune, which is the first one. Firstly, the development of Hashirama Sochi into Amado sliding shutters. So, firstly, Hashirama no Sunpo de Aru, Ken, Ga, Tatami no Nagasa, Ni, Link, Surkoto, Ni, Ote, Dono, Yona, Kikaka, Zentai, de Okota, Kato, Yukutako, Tonti, Ona, Shoshimas. Secondly, I'll talk about how the unit,、uh, the, the, the standard measurement, un, measurement unit of the ken, which is the length of a tatami mat, led to standardization of building materials. って言っても調整したら合う、えー、使えるというようなことが起こってきます。And then I'll talk about how the standardization of architectural components meant that in cities, towns and cities from the Edo period,、um, people could take the fittings from one house to another when they moved houses. そのようなあの法、えー、規制寸法計画が実は都市にまで影響したというのが、えー、江戸時代の大阪で起こりまして、それについて、えー、お話をします。I'll also talk about how this had an effect on town planning, even、uh, in Osaka in the Edo period in particular. あと10、えー、10分ぐらい話していい ?Have I got another 10 minutes to keep going? はいえっと、それではあのー、まずこれ、えー、カスラリック、有名な建物ですけれども、それの、えー、アクソメーズです。これ見れば分かるように、カスラリックは、えー、柱間装置一般の建物ですね。この中で、この赤い矢印の部分をこれから写真で見,、えー、見ます。I'm about to show you a photograph of the, the section that, is, that the red arrow is pointing to. これがその写真ですけれども、まあ、これがアマドに関係しています。Here it is, and this is related to what I mentioned, アマド、uh, wooden sliding shutters. はい。えっと、赤く枠で囲みましたが、あのー、右がですね、アマドを使っていない昔の、えー建具のコンポーネントで、えー、と左側が、えー、アマドを使ったコンポーネントです。The red, the red box on the right shows pre アマド old style sliding doors, whereas the box on the left shows what happens when we introduce アマド。どんな、えー、発明が起こったか、えー、絵で確認してみたいと思います。I'd like to try and show you what the development, what development actually happened here. えー、と左側は、えー、アマド発明前の形ですけれども。そうすると、1番と2番は、えー、木製のドアで、これは、えー、プロテクションのために使われました。そのため、えー、明かり取りは3番だけで、要は柱間の片方しか、えー、光が届かなかったわけです。Number three is the only screen here that lets daylight through.、Uh, and so you can see that half of the space between the pillars will always be blocked by a wooden sliding door. しかしそれ、えーえー、雨戸が発明されました。But then, 
アマドは何かというと、一番、二番の板の板塔がですね、柱間の外側に出るということです。And what happens is one and two, the wooden sliding doors, are brought outside the pillars. So, the all the wooden shutters represented here by four can be slid into seven, which is the Amado enclosure kind of pocket for the doors, which means that. Both five and six、um, are open to the daylight. これがアマドの発明で、これによって日本建築はさらに、えー、光の調節を,を、えー、豊かなものにしました。This is the invention of Amado,、uh, and it is what lets a lot more light into Japanese architecture. もしアマドが発明されてなかったら、カツラリキはこういう姿をしていたと思います。If Amado hadn't been invented, this I think is what カツラリキ would have looked like。今のカツラリキはアマドが発明されたので、こういうスッキリとした姿になりました。But thanks to the invention of Amado, this is what it actually looks like。そしてこれは、えー、映画で、えー、お見せしているキクゲステにもアマドというのは使われています。You can also see Amado in the video that forms part of the exhibition at Kikugetsute. Amado no Koka was no movie of Mireba, it was the Vakarimas. If you watch the film, you will immediately get an idea of what difference Amado makes. Moving on. Hashirato to you, Moipo no Ega deva, Ken. つまり、はいはいはい、柱間装置による基準寸法と畳の関係を説明しています。In another of the videos in the exhibition, a city of columns describes the relationship between the standard unit of measurement, the ken, and tatami size. 同じような寸法がいろんなシーンで出てくるというのが、この映画で導入部に使われています。In the video, you can see the same dimension used in different ways. And we know that the same dimensions because it's a dimension that comes from tatami. Tatami no mattress no nagasa hoko ga ikken to onaji n a r i m a s h t The length of a tatami mat is one ken. The space between two columns. そして、一軒が20個になる、えー、20軒になると、これが、えー、一つの、えー、敷地の長さになりました。軒 gives you the depth of a one a private estate. それが2倍になると、えーえー、と1個のタウンブロックができると、そういうような計画が。えー、幕府によって、ねえー、出されました。Double that and 40 ken is the depth of one town block. So this was the, the town planning、uh, in the Edo period in Osaka. その、えー、シームレスな寸法関係をこれから紹介します。Let me give you some examples of this seamless、uh, spatial planning. まずこれは私がですね、大阪というところで、えー、実際にえー、測定した長屋です。で長屋は、えー、畳を、あのーえー、ベースに、えー、寸法して、えー、寸法計画を行っています。This is a traditional row house or 長屋 in Osaka that I measured. And the dimensions of the house are based on the tatami unit. 前も言ったように、畳の長さ、えー、長い方向が1軒ですね。As I said, the length of one tatami is one ken. そして短い方向が、えー、半減です。And the short, the width of a tatami is half a ken. 長屋はこの半減と一ken によって構成されています。And the nagaya, the row house, is made up of one ken and half ken spans. まず、えー、半減で、えー、廊下。First, you have a corridor that is half a ken wide. 
一軒でいるところ。Um, area, えー、あともう半減で、えー、しまうところ。And another half a can for storage. 非常に合理的な形をしていたということがわかると思います。You see how logical this is. そしてこれが、えー、一つのオーナーの、えー、敷地です。でここに長屋がこういうのように置かれています。This is, this shows the, the land or the estate of one、uh, landowner, and it's divided up as you can see. これがそのランドオーナー全体の、えー、敷地ですね。The pink is, is the land, the owner's、um, estate, and the blue is one Nagaya. で、このピンク色がですね、このタウンブロックのどこにあるかというと、まあ、こういうところにあるの、いえいえ、一個になるわけです。And this pink Estate slots into a town block, as you see on the right. そしてそれが、えー、2倍に重なり合うことで、えー、タウンブロックの、えー、深さがで,できるとかそういうような形でタウンブロックの形が決定しています。So double the depth of the individual estate gives you a town block. そしてこのタウンブロックはどのような関係を大阪市全体とか、えーえー、持っているかというとそれがこの絵でわかります。And then you look at this、uh, picture which shows you the relationship between that town block and the city of Osaka. でこのタウンブロックはある、えー、昔の絵図を、えー、拡大したものでその拡大を取るとこんな感じになりますね。We zoom out. This is what it looks like. この一個一個が先ほどお見せしたブルーの色のタウンブロックだったわけです。これを写真で見てみましょう。これは,これは1960年代の大阪の写真です。This is a Saka in the 1960s. 非常に規則的な家がずっと並んでいるのが見えるでしょうか You can see how it's very regulated, all these uniform houses lined up.、えー、長屋はですね、300年ぐらい前から建ってるにもかかわらず、えー、1世紀ぐらい前までずっと作られてました。These Nagaya have been around, been being built for 300 years, but they were still being built a century ago. それはその合理性によるもので、現在でも長屋をリノベーションするという事例は多くあります。Because they're so logical, they're still being, there are some that are still being renovated today. 1940年の調査によると、大阪の 80% が長屋であったという、そういう結果が出ています。And、according to one survey, 80% of all houses in Osaka were Nagaya row houses in 1940. そして、われわれは柱戸と,という映画で、その長屋が今どのように生きているかというのを、えー、説明しました。Uh, 今でも残っています。これが大阪でございます。This is a soccer. えーえー、柱の都。City of Columns。ねえー、これが、えー、結論になります。えっとあのはいえっと、日本建築はです、ね、基本的には今説明したようなことで、えー、内外の部分の柱山装置が非常に発達した、えー、建築だということが言えます。We can say that Japanese architecture, as I said, is one where the、uh, 柱山装置 m a k e this、uh, division between inside and outside particularly rich. しかし、その裏側には、柱山装置をベースにした、えー、きっちりとした寸法計画が存在していました。そしてその、えー、寸法計画は、えー、県という基準寸法をベースにして、都市計画のベースにまでなりました。These dimensions are based on the unit, a standardized unit called the Ken,、uh, and affect、um, even town planning. このような、えーえー、と規格化されたあの、えー、建築の世界というのは、ある種のユートピアみたいな世界ですね、建築家にとってみると。This extent of standardization is almost an architectural utopia. 
、えっと、日本の近代建築が比較的速やかにあの西洋からの、えー、建築様式を、えー、取り入れることができたのにはまさにこの江戸時代に培われたさまざまな建築の手法があったといったことが言えると思います。これが現在でも日本現,現代建築の品質を確保していると思っています。And I think that it's because of these architectural standards that date way back that, we, that Japanese modern architecture has been so、um, quick to absorb a variety of Western architectural styles、um, that uphold the quality of Japanese architecture today. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Nakatani Sensei. What a fascinating Thank you. presentation. You.、Oh, I, I've got so much that, uh, uh, that has, has, has triggered、uh, further investigation. I, 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 we can move to questions from, from, our, from our audience、um, in, in, a, in a short while. So if you have any questions, anybody, please do、uh, post them through the question and answer function. Your presentation, though, was such a good accompaniment. To the film inside the exhibition at Japan House. I completely now know why you have this film. It makes so much sense. And, and, and looking at Kikugetsute,、mm. we see that Hashirama Sochi breaks down this concept of inside and outside、uh, of a building. And you can see that outside and inside are. Connected through uh, uh, a series of layers, as such.、Yes. In, in your presentation, you said that this was, 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 was very much to do with Japanese architecture and, and different from a concept、um, outside. My, my, is, is it not recognized as a boundary then? Is architecture not recognized as a boundary between the outside and inside in Japan? Maybe you could speak a little bit about that. えっと、サイモンさん、質問ありがとうございます。えー、もちろんあの、そんなことはありません。あ,のあらゆる建物に、内、えー、と外という、えー、テーマは、えー、含まれています。Well, of course, it's not completely unique, Simon. Thank you for your question.、Um, all sorts of buildings recognize that this boundary between inside and outside. しかしながら、日本建築の場合、比較的に固定されたパーツといったものがあのなかったというふうに言ってもいいんじゃないかと思うんですね。例えば、中国建築の場合のレンガで積んだ壁、あるいはローマ建築のレンガ積みの祖籍像。メイソン村ーで建物を作った場合に、柱間装置をぐるぐる変えることはできません。しかしながら、日本建築の場合は、その変更がですね、非常に煩雑に起きます。そこがまあ非常に面白いところかなと思います。But I think what's interesting about Japanese architecture is that is this lack of fixed parts, of fixed components. If you look at the, the Chinese architecture that I showed that has the,、uh, the, the brick walls、um, enclosing the wooden pillars, or indeed at, at Roman masonry, those walls can't be changed.、Um, whereas with、uh, Japanese architecture, these Hashirama Sochi can be freely interchanged. And、um, I think that's, that's what's interesting about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have another question here about、um, the connection between Hashirama Sochi and, and maybe modernist architecture.、Uh, mm. Maybe you could speak a little bit about that for us. Hi, I know. これは、えー、とまた別の研究ではありますが、私は昔、1900年代初めの、えー、アメリカとヨーロッパにおける日本建築の影響の調査をしたことがあります。Well, in a, a separate research project of mine, we, I've looked into the effect or the, the, the impact of or the influence of, of Japanese architecture on American and European architecture in the early、uh, 
。いずれにせよ、19世紀の末ぐらいからヨーロッパでは日本建築が流行り、20世紀の初めぐらいからアメリカでは日本建築がやはり流行っています。でこれはあのあの日,本日本建築が素晴らしいのみならずですね、それをあの何らかの,あの非常に興味深いものとして、えー、西洋の方があの取り入れたってことが非常に重要なことだと思っています。Japanese architecture was popular in Europe from the end of the 19th century and in the US from the beginning of the, of the 20th century, not just for its aesthetics, but because、uh, they, were, they were interested in this form of architecture. まあ、その結果として、例えばフランク・ロイド・ライトが日本建築の方法を彼の方、えー、設計方法論に持ち込んだり、あるいはあの実はミス・ファンデル・ロー、えー、ですら、あの日本建築について、えー、に関する、あのー、興味を持った、えー、経緯がありますで。そういったことを考えていくと、やはりモダニズムの、あのー、が作られる際に日本建築のこの柱間装置的な考え方っていうのは非常に深い影響を実は持ってるんじゃないかなというふうに僕は思います。あえー、ミス・ファンデル・ローエ、えーっとドえー、ドイツの人、ミス・ファンデル・ローエっていい,い,いのかなミス・ファンデル・ローエ、違う。<笑><笑>はい um, so even, even、um, people like Frank Lloyd Wright incorporated ideas of Japanese architecture into his own theories of, of architecture and ミス・ファンデル・ローエ from、uh, Germany even、uh, Wrote about Japanese architecture.、Uh, and so I think that Hashirama Sochi and concepts of Japanese architecture were really influential、um, when it came to modernism. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, we have a few questions. I'll try and combine them、uh, from, from some of our,、uh, our guests. This is about、um, the rooms or, or, or the, the building measured in the size of tatami, this tatami wari. Actually, is, is, has, has raised some interest.、Uh, one is, you know, where does the size of tatami come from?、Uh, another one is, of course, rooms are measured in, in Japan in, when, you, when you rent an apartment or buy a house, you,、mm -hmm. you measure it as one jo, u two jo. u You mentioned the word ken,、mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there, there's a, a terminology there that's, that, that, that is slightly different.、Mm -hmm. and, and one question about, you mentioned Osaka, okay, and these、okay. Nagaya. And、um, mm. are, are other cities also measured in the same way that uh,、mm. Osaka uh, has been、mm. in your illustration? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. All good questions that a lot of Japanese people would not know the answers to. えー、とこれはですね、えー、非常に専門的なことになるので、すごく乱暴に言いますね。えー、と最初は柱間も畳もあんま関係なかったんですがだんだんだんだんそれが中世とかあの室町時代とかであの関係してきますよね。でそうするとあはい。Uh, I'm going to try and not to get too technical、uh, with my answers, but initially the, the space between pillars, the hashi rama,、uh, bore no relation to tatami.、Um, The, they, they start to, to,、um, to form this relationship in the Middle Ages and the Muromachi period. So, in the Muromachi period, the Muromachi period was a very good thing. So, there was no standardized、uh, dimension before the Muromachi period. And, in the case of the Muromachi period, the Muromachi period was a very good thing. So, in the case of the Muromachi period, ね、it wasn't until people started covering their floors with tatami mats that they realized that the relation between the size of the mats and the space between the pillars was actually important. ぐらい190センチぐらいですね。Uh, 
Uh, and this is when the, the size of the tatami is also standardized as six shaku and three sun, which is about 190 centimeters. はい。で、えっと、これと柱間は実はちょっと違うんですけど、その話をするとすごく面倒くさくなるので、そこは割愛しますが、にありイコールで柱間の寸法です。一見です。あ、and uh, that was I'm going to skip over all the technical detail, but more or less the 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 same as the the the, the space between pillars. それから次に、え、地域差はあるかということについてお答えします。Moving um, on to whether this is the same in other cities and other regions. え、地域差はあります。それは、はい。There uh, is a diff there are, there are differences between regions. それはですね、畳みたいな建築商品が発達した都においてこの畳割りというものが優勢です。the these tatami uh, dimensions and the architectural products based on these dimensions um were were um more advanced in the in the capital で、その最も、え、中心地は大阪と京都。大阪と京都。京都。um and, and basically, the, at the center of this was Osaka and Kyoto. Tokyo at this point was, was still provincial, uh, and so it wasn't as, as advanced and sophisticated as Osaka and Kyoto. え、Nowadays, people are starting to forget that tatami were originally a size for people to be able to sleep on. Uh, and so designers uh, have started to make tatami smaller to fit in with their designs. And this also complicates things when it comes to measuring the size of a room based on the number of tatami or jaw, uh, as the, uh, as the uh, questioner um, mentioned. So the end. It's a bit. It's a bit of a tricky one. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Thank you for answering it so, um, uh, so so much in detail. Uh, th this is. I, this this, is, this is, has has piqued my interest. This is a, a question which is saying, why are the aesthetics about this hashirama sochi, the aesthetics of of space, placed on the boundaries of the building, and not in the inside? Is there something about that in particular? あ、あ、あ。えっと、それはですね、あの、もちろん内側にもあの、柱間装置が行くようにも使われます。Naturally, you you also get hashirama sochi within a building. しかしながら人間の ま、これは普遍的な建築体験として、やはり最も重要なのはですね、建築と世界との universal to the experience of architecture is is the idea of the boundary between a a piece of architecture and the outside world and how to design that is something that is is one of the most important things for a designer and and clearly something that japanese architects have always been very interested in thank you thank you we 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 are unfortunately running out of time but we do, we do have one question here this is from alex um th this this question is about did the modular systems 
lead to more flexible living spaces? Or did the moving walls come from a need to have multiple use rooms? えっと、大きくは後者ですね。でもそれは単,単に空間的な問題だけではなくて、日本建築で、例えば、えー、住宅が寺院になったりっていう、そういうあの機能用途が大きく変わることがあります。そういう時なんかに、さまざまな変更が起こるっていうのが面白いところじゃないですかね。Generally speaking, the latter, but it, not purely because of spatial limitations, but because people in Japan might live in a temple, for example, in a shrine,、uh, and that space would, be need to, would need to be used for multiple purposes, which I think is something、uh, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. I, I, I know there's a lot of engagement here with, with、um, our, our viewers. Thank you so much. It's very interesting.、Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. There's so many uh, comments uh, uh, celebrating what we've just seen. It, for me, it, it's been amazing. Thank you so much. I, I, I'd just like to say that your film in the exhibition. Has influenced one, one of our visitors, a Japanese woman who came and, and said to me after seeing the film that she had thought that shoji were doors. And now she realizes that shoji are also windows. And I, I would say your presentation has been a wonderful accompaniment to that film. I do、uh, suggest that people do come and see that in person because it is, it is rather wonderful. And, and we Have been able to give、uh, links for those who aren't able to visit Japan House London, links to where you can see、uh, your videos as well online,、uh, which will, I think, illustrate this presentation even more. Thank you very much, Nakatani Sensei. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. We haven't been able to look at your wonderful house, even. I can see that, you know, we, <laughs> we, we have Hashira Masochi. Right behind you there as well, maybe, maybe another time.、Um, and, and thank you to our interpreter as well, Beth and Jones.、Uh, I hope we're able to、uh, meet again sometime. Yeah. Thank you to the audience,、uh, of course, with their wonderful questions, which are, I, I think are still coming in. Thank you so much. And following this event, all attendees will receive a quick uh, feedback uh, questionnaire, which we would ask you to, to fill in as it will help us to continue to make events like this. If you could stay with me still for a little bit, Nakatani Sansei, while I introduce what we're doing at,、um, at Japan House. Of course, we are screening your films, Hashirama Sochi, Equipment in Between. This runs until the 6th of April. These are accompanying the exhibition, and, and, and guests are able to see these. I, I do highly recommend、uh, viewing these. This, of course, is part of the exhibition, Windowology New Architectural Views from Japan, which runs until the 10th of April.、Um, please, please do visit.、Uh, Admission is free and it's at Japan House、uh, London. In connection with this exhibition, we also have demonstrations of、uh, Sado or Chado、uh, by Tanko Kai UK, part of the Urasenke Foundation. This is our Windows on Tea. Of course, part of the exhibition does show a tea house from Kyoto. This also runs until the 6th of April. We continue online. With our Chatham House series, Japan UK Cooperation in Africa, looking ahead to Taikad 8. That is on the 24th of February. And we are also commencing a series with Kintsugi. We start with a demonstration of、uh, the art of Kintsugi with Nishikawa Iku, a practitioner of Kintsugi in Japan House, on the 27th of February. Once again, thank you so much for joining us, Nakatani Sensei. It's been a great pleasure. And I hope next time maybe we can meet in London. That would be wonderful. I would like to hear the next installment of this story in person. Thank you so much for joining us from Ibaraki and everybody who else has joined us、uh, online as well. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>